When scientists examined human embryos, they learned an earth-shattering truth about evolution. Before we begin, do us a favor and click that like button. Also subscribe to our channel and click the notification bell to be inspired by these inspiring stories every day. With crystal clear scans of unborn babies now before them, a group of scientists can't quite believe their eyes. It seems that they've made a shocking observation, one which could have profound scientific implications. It's a little early to say for certain, of course, but this work might just rewrite our understanding of human evolution. In order to conduct this research, scientists made use of novel and sophisticated technologies. With them, they were able to produce some extremely detailed scans of developing babies inside the womb. These images that appeared were exhibiting an unusual feature of fetuses which had never previously been noted. The ramifications of this find could prove to be momentous. As we've mentioned, the work may contribute to a new and more accurate comprehension of how human beings have evolved. And perhaps even more importantly, it could offer experts a greater insight into certain defects with which babies can be born. Of course, the scientific community has long sought to detail the progress of unborn human babies. Indeed, the commonly used terminology for this process is prenatal development. In most cases, this occurs for roughly 38 weeks across three different phases. First, we have the germinal stage. This is followed by the embryonic phase, which leads finally to the fetal stage. Before any of these stages can get underway, of course, conception must take place. This can only happen after a woman's egg has been transported from her ovary into one of her fallopian tubes. This transpires every month and is known as ovulation. A woman has a pair of fallopian tubes, each one of which is connected to the womb. The woman's egg can only be fertilized when a male sperm has found its way into the fallopian tubes. This can happen after sexual intercourse or after an artificial insemination method has taken place. It may take many hours for the sperm to make its way into the tubes. At the outset, a process referred to as cleavage takes place, wherein the zygote starts dividing at a swift rate. It initially splits into a pair of indistinguishable cells, which themselves become four cells, then eight cells, then sixteen, and so on. All the while, these cells have been traveling through the fallopian tube towards the womb. At 16 cells, this new entity can be referred to as a morula. This eventually reaches the end of the fallopian tube and arrives at the womb. Here, the cells continue to divide with a sort of pocket known as a blasticole developing in the middle of them. The morula turns into something called a blastocyst, which is now made up of between 200 and 300 cells. What follows next is the embryonic stage, and this second phase runs up to roughly week 8 of the pregnancy. As with the previous germinal stage, this second chapter sees the cells persisting in their swift divisions. However, collective group of these cells start to assume unique properties. This process is known as differentiation. By the following week, the growth of bones should be underway. In fact, little buds representing the beginning of the limbs will be present. The face will start to be composed and the brain and heart will continue to progress. The heart, in fact, should actually start pumping about this time. The eighth week marks the close of the embryonic stage. By this time, the embryo will have formed its most vital structures and the brain can bring about muscle movement. From here on out, the embryo is designated as a fetus. Naturally, this is the start of the fetal stage of prenatal development. It's during this final phase that the most striking progress is made. At the earliest point of the final stage, a fetus tends to measure up at just over one inch long. Furthermore, it weighs roughly just a tenth of an ounce. However, after 30 or so more weeks, it should be about 20 inches long and weigh close to 7 pounds. During the first few weeks of the fetal stage, however, the fetus should be a little over 3 inches. Its head should comprise about half its overall magnitude, with facial characteristics and hands and feet becoming more defined. Now, in fact, is the time in which the fetus should be capable of forming a fist. By about the 15th week of pregnancy, the fetus may be somewhere close to 6 inches long. Delicate hairs, known as lanugo, begin to sprout on its head, all as organs, bones, and muscles continuously grow. At this point, the fetus will be capable of performing swallowing and sucking actions. 
Between the 25th and 28th weeks of the pregnancy, the progress of the brain and nervous system will advance greatly. The fetus will be able to open and shut its eyes, and it will generally have more command of its own behavior. The lungs will now be capable of taking in air. Over the next six weeks, fat should be more prominent beneath the fetus's skin. Its bones will be very soft, but they'll be clearly defined. The lanugo will withdraw from the skin, and the fingernails will now be entirely present. By week 36, the fetus will usually measure from 15 to 17 inches in length. It should go without saying that prenatal development is an extremely important process. As such, it's more often been the subject of scientific inquiry. After all, the more we know about how fetuses develop, the more we can ultimately learn about human beings, our features, and the functions associated with them. After about seven weeks, the researchers behind the study noticed a fetus had 30 muscles in its hands and feet. But five weeks on, roughly 10 of those muscles had either disappeared or combined with one another. Two of these muscles taken together can be termed as dorsometacarpals. Muscles such as these can actually be found in several creatures alive today, perhaps most notably in lizards. In the case of humans, however, it's been suggested that they cease to exist in adults some 250 million years into the past. The fact that we see them in fetuses then represents something of a snapshot of the course of human evolution. The researcher who led the study is Dr. Reed Diogo, who is associated with Washington, D.C.'s Howard University. Speaking to British broadcaster the BBC in 2019, Diogo elaborated on the additional thumb muscle. We have a lot of muscles going to the thumb, very precise thumb movements, but we lost a lot of muscles that are going to other digits, he said. In our evolution, we do not need them so much. Apparently, scientists have actually recorded some people as having a number of dorsal metacarpals that typically disappear in the womb. However, it's never the same number of the muscles that can be seen in embryos and fetuses. In the cases where the muscles do last in people after birth, they can be connected to abnormalities in the person's limbs. Dr. Almasija continued, The important question for me now is, what else are we missing? What will we find when all the human body is inspected at this detail during its development? What's causing certain structures to appear and disappear? We can now see how it happens, but what about the why? Dr. Diogo has reflected that losing these muscles in our hands and feet isn't necessarily to our advantage. Some of the things we're losing, it's not that we're getting better humans and more progress. No, we're really losing things that will make superhumans. Superhumans will be keeping those muscles because you'd be able to move all your digits, including your feet, as thumbs. We lost them because we don't need them. The research conducted by Dr. Diogo and his colleagues is fascinating, but ultimately more studies will be required. Thankfully, such works appear to be in the pipeline. And as the scientist himself told the BBC, it used to be that we had more understanding of the early development of fishes, frogs, chicken, and mice than in our own species. But these new techniques allow us to see human development in much greater detail. The world is filled with stories going viral every single day. But how many of these sites can you actually follow? We understand that your day should start with positive stories, stories that resonate with you. And so we started JoJo Stories. Our mission is to create meaningful stories that cover everything from animals to anthropology, history to environment and lifestyle. The kind of content you read on our site will be one you'll want to share with your family and friends. We hope you'll join our growing family and be part of our community. Welcome to JoJo Stories. JoJoStories.com